What's up guys? Back with you today and got a first impressions video going on of a Vapor Shark RDNA 40. Um, it's not really much of a review so much as a first impressions. Um, let me just get a couple things off the box and everything ready. Uh, so where did I get it? How much did it cost? What do I think about it? And do I like using it would be the questions. Um, first off, got it from Vapor Shark's website. Um, how much, or actually it was a pre-order, well, gnarly pre-order. Well, I'm going to get to that in a minute. That was, uh, that was some crazy stuff. But uh, yeah, it was like 190 free shipping. Let me check. Let me see. Vapor Shark online store. Yep. 189 total. Which isn't bad. Uh, USPS first class. Um, yeah, it was pretty good. So, the box that it comes in is uh, like that. Like that. And to all you guys wondering who have seen my, my older videos, um, Yes, I did fix the flippy thingy because, like, if I were to show you, like, pull up a newspaper, everything would be backwards. So I finally found something to be able to flip the image. So that way, so now you guys don't just see a whole bunch of gibberish going on. But uh, so, what is the DNA forty? Well, the DNA forty is a temperature controlled um, board by Evolve. Goes to forty watts. Adjustable from one watt to forty watts. Adjustable from um, 200 degrees to 600 degrees. Um, same features as a DNA 30, but with just some added extra stuff. It also has a step down as well, uh, and reverse polarity protection <laughs> as well. And um, been jacking around with it, just doing stuff and things, different coil builds. In my Russian 91%, I have a, I think it's a 0.4 or 0.3 ohm single coil. Uh, so I have like 10 or you know, like 15-ish wraps, something like that, uh, 32 gauge uh, nickel wire. I got 50 feet of it from uh, Lightning Vapes, nickel 200. Um, in my plume veil, uh, it's a uh, fucking 30 wrap dual coil, comes out to 0.4. Show you that real quick. 3.4. Um, yeah, I got it at 31 watts right now at 500 degrees. It behaves pretty nicely. I, I like it. I like it. Um, in my Nimbus, it's not a Chimbus, by the way. <laughs> I'm not one of those, you know, anti-clone or, or authentic only people. Just if it's sexy, I'll get it. If it's a good price, I'll get it. If it's accessible, I'll get it. If it's not accessible, like like a squeak reloaded, and of course I'm gonna go for the fucking thing. Um, but yeah, that one's just a an eight wrap dual coil. Came out to 0.15. I'll show you guys uh, how it performs. But um, everything's dropped in a th uh, three millimeter drill bit using um, just regular organic cotton from Maxim Hygiene. Uh, so I'll just show you some of the performance. See if I can bring it up a little bit back here. Give you some cloud shots. Really nice, really, really just fucking tip top. And uh, I got it set to 500, you guys just saw it, 500 degrees. Um, oh, and my battery is really low, but the beauty about this new Vapor Shark is. Haha, -ha, magnets, baby. Yep. Works pretty good, and yes, it does have reverse polarity protection as well. So when I take out my VTC five, there we go. Um, uh, it, it could just be me nitpicking, or I actually could be onto something with a design flaw. But you see right here, um, positive, negative. So 
the device is like this, you know, like that. They have the negative at the top. <laughs> if it's like that for the DNA 30s, that's going to piss you off because, you know, you normally think battery goes, you know, positive set, positive end up. And, and, and you, you, you put it in thinking, oh, yeah, 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 it's just positive end up. And then before, you know, what's that smell? Ah, oh, shit, I just fried my chip, you know. But, uh, yeah, so negative, as you guys can, can see, it is negative and then the positive. So let me just test it out for you guys. Reverse polarity. Got the battery in backwards. Sounds good. Damn it. It was freaking pissing me off. All right. And uh, it didn't come with the VTC5. Came with the uh, the LG um, 18650 uh, 25 amper. Uh, 2500 mAh, I believe, as well, which is well, pretty cool. And. Uh, so <laughs> basically put the battery in upside down, I guess. And before you know it, um, let me see if that's how I do it. So will it come to life? Yes, it will. Dang it, I forgot that ribbon. Yeah, it also comes with this little little ribbon as well, so it makes taking out the battery just exceptionally easy. But the there is a spring right here in the positive. Right there, on the on the on the negative, there's a spring right there. But uh, I mean, yeah, it's pretty nice design flow. Um, on Evolve site, they are advertising on 95% battery efficiency, of which knowing John from Evolve, I, I think his name is John, the, the, the actual engineer. Uh, I do believe him, <laughs> you know. So uh, just pretty much just, just like that. Dunskies. Alrighty then, and a fully charged battery. Let's see if I can. Sorry about the glare, guys. Yep, fully charged. There we go. Vaping really nice. Vaping is just fantastic now. Some people kind of get annoyed. People like. They're doing reviews and shit, and they're vaping in the video, just just vaping all the time. And everyone's like, "Damn it, talk about the product!" And I'm like, "Dude, if you're watching a vaping video, you want to see the person vaping the shit. If all they're doing is just talking about it, not vaping it, kind of makes you wonder if, hey, is uh, <laughs> so you really endorsing that thing, or are you just you know vaping it for a reason? You know? So yeah, I'll show you guys some builds, um, the plume." Let me juice this thing up. And uh, the juice that I'm using, I've actually gotten into stretching my juices with VG. So like in my bottle, my 15 mil bottle like this, I just fill half with um with whatever the fuck I have, and then I'll fill the other half with uh you know 100% VG, and you know just because when you really think, when it comes to saving money. Let's say this bottle of Phoenix Blood, for example, it's like fifteen dollars for a twenty mil, ten dollars for a hundred and twenty mil. We can make this thing go a long way. And yes, it effectively cuts the nicotine down from like six to three or three to one and a half, depending on what uh, which one you have, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, got my baby all juiced up, and you can see them coils. And yeah, it's a long ass coil, thirty wrap, dual coil on my plume veil. Yes, it's authentic, whatever. Nobody gives a shit. Nice clicky. Light up button. Actually, is it locked? Yep, it's locked. There we go. Haha. -ha. But yeah, I mean, it's good. I don't know if you guys can can you know see it good. I I don't know how well my thing is gonna focus, but it's a shit ton of wraps. It, but because it's thirty two gauge, and it's nickel two hundred. Um. It's not like doing 30 wraps with 28 gauge cam ball. That 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 coil is gonna be like that, or or 24 gauge or 26 gauge. You know, it's one of those lower ones. If you were to do like fucking 15 wraps of that one, that coil would damn near be 
freaking that long, but because it's 32 gauge and it's really thin, you could do 40 wraps and fit it in there fairly easily. But because it's nickel wire, it is really fucking soft. I'll, I'll get to the wire in a minute, but to move that one out of the way. I know I know a couple of you guys are gonna be thinking, damn it, max it out, damn it, show us, show us. So I will show you guys the proof. 30 or 31 actually. So 40. One, two, three, four, five. Click the positive and the negative at the same time. And there we go. So let's crank it up to a let's see what is it? Oh no. Crank it up. We'll just say we get 600. I've done it earlier. 600. Boom. One, two, three, four, five. And uh, it's pretty mean. It is pretty mean. And to show you guys the proof, there you go. All right. Let's do it. Not gonna lie, this thing can chuck the vapor. It can fucking chuck the clouds pretty just very impressively. I was impressed with the amount of vapor production you can get with this thing. Very, very nice. Very nice. But uh, yeah, pretty good. Um, and it's not annoyingly hot, you know? If you're to do like like a 0.5 uh, with a campball, just whatever 28 gauge or whatever gauge wire you choose. Um, and if you were to crank that one to 40 watts, it'd be a little hot. It'd be a, uh, be, <laughs> be a little on the warm side, put it that way. But with this thing, I mean, it's just phenomenal. But whatever you do, don't just click it and hold it at 40 watts at 600 degrees ma completely maxed out because it won't burn your cotton, but you'll definitely get a burn hit because that's a lot of power you're putting through your coils. And yeah, one of the things Evolve is, um, is uh, what's it called? One of the things they are, they're advertising is no dry hits. Indeed, I have never gotten a dry hit. But earlier today, like an idiot, I just kind of clicked it and fired it, completely maxed out. And, and then I went to vape it and I was like, what the fuck? And then I, I realized, ah, oh, shit, I kind of I didn't char the wick by any means but but it was definitely a little on the <laughs> a little on the crispy side <laughs> and uh you know I just rather than re-wicking I just figured screw it just put a whole nother build in there just for shits and giggles yeah like right there that was borderline dry and uh this wire is really soft let me show you. I just pulled off my top cap. You guys just saw. Look at that. Look at that. So I have to get my freaking tweezers and I have to just jam it right back in without freaking destroying the damn coil because it is stupidly soft. I mean, this thing is just stupid soft. I mean, it it's ridiculous how freaking soft this damn thing is. But, um, but yeah, and so... You know, I just you know, kind of packed it right back down. You guys just saw. So there's pros and cons with it. It, you, it. It's really soft. So if you build a really big coil and you stuff a shit ton of cotton in there like I did. But this is the plume veil and you do have the air flow holes on the side. Um, so if I over drip on this thing, I will know about it because it will leak out and it will leak out and it will piss me off because of the finish on this thing. I'll get to that in a minute when I finish. But um, it just juice gets everywhere and with 100%, I don't know, from a 50-50 blend, they're all 50-50 blends, all the juices that I buy. And then you max them out with VG, not max them out with VG, but dilute them, or stretch them actually, both one and the same. Uh, it turns it from a 50-50 to a 70-30 or an 80-20 because I'll just, I'll keep diluting it again and again until, until I feel, uh, when I vape it all the way, I'll just repeat the process half and half and then Go like that because it's thicker it's more oily so it's like harder to get off it's it's just a bitch it, it really is i mean it's just you know borderline a nightmare but um uh, but yeah i mean if you have it maxed out it'll just vaporize it just really quickly um my sweet spot 
I'm still fiddling around with it to try and find a sweet spot. But uh, for now, with the plume veil, just like that, because that's how I've been running it, because it's like more, I guess more, it's just my preference in building, um, resistance, etc. Uh, around 27 to 33 ish watts at around in between 520 and 460 degrees. It's kind of my sweet spot. It's really good to have all those options kind of fiddling around with it because you have a, you know, you can really fine tune it into exactly what you're looking for. Shit, I still have this fucking person. Excuse me while I adjust my thing. Yeah, just bring it, bring it down to just um, 490 degrees. You guys see it, there's the proof. Did I upside down? No, I don't. Alright, cool. But yeah, and um, the finish is like a it's like a matte finish, almost like the Russian ninety one percent, but it, it it's almost rubbery, silicone-y. And a matte finish. I mean, it, it came out really good. It came out really well. The finish. Um, the buttons I hear are. Uh, I think they're. Uh, let me just look up some of the specs for you guys as well. It, it'll be quick. I, I got some pretty good internet. Let me just Google. Um, Vapor Shark. I'm on the website. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Blah blah blah. 18. Yes, I'm 18. I'm a grown ass man. Damn it. Okay, so uh, the fuck. They don't even have the finish on this damn thing. Cause you used to have a whole bunch of like um. You used to have a whole bunch of uh, specs on it, and I mean like really in depth. You know, good good specs, but let me see. Uh. Yeah, yeah, mate black, uh, mate, mate, whatever, uh, mate black, uh, yeah, I think that's kind of all I could find, used to have a little bit more, I had this one file saved, I don't know if they purposely deleted it, but yeah, um, anyways, so that's just the little bit of the nitty gritty, they do have some other good stuff in there, um, that they've done before. Because I know with the DNA 20s of the Vapor Sharks, people were complaining that it didn't have a spring loaded, uh, ah, spring loaded 510. And this one, they fixed it. And yes, uh, the threads are fairly smooth, fairly smooth. I wouldn't say buttery, but they're really above average. They're above average. You'll be satisfied by them. Gold plated, um, <laughs> firing pin. And yes, it is. Spring loaded, you guys see me pushing it in. So it is spring loaded. Um, so if I put my Russian on it, and I guess before I put my Russian 91 on it, I need to show you guys like that. I mean, if I hold it in my hand like that, like this. I mean, it, it's a pretty tiny device. I knew the Vapor Sharks were small, I just didn't think they were that small. Um, when it comes to size comparison, I have an H Cigar DNA 30 clone. And um, so here would be like a good little size comparison. So it's uh, H Cigar is a little bit taller. It's basically it's a, it's a HANA clone, but it's mostly a DNA 30 clone because you can find the boxes just, you can just find them on eBay or, or wherever. For modders, because it's Hannah Mods pretty much uses the same box. Not for the DNA 40s. I think for the DNA 40s they use a different box, or same box but different finish. But um, so like width wise, width wise would be like like that. Or if I put them, if I stack them up, you could actually see the width difference a little bit. Um, when it comes to you know like that, it's definitely definitely a Bigger. Um, does it have venting? 
Yes, it does have venting. Yeah, trust me, it has venting. But um, but yeah, a really, really fantastic, fantastic uh, bulb. So if I put my uh, Russian on here, which is built with nickel 200 build, um, let me make sure that the, the positive pin is sticking out because I really don't feel like short circuiting this bitch, frying the fucking cotton, and then going ahead and having a fucking re wick this damn thing, or basically re wick it. You're not going to fucking drain it and shit. But yeah, you know, devices will look flush on it. Pretty good. Now for the Russian. Uh, oh yeah, uh, whenever you screw something on, new coil, press up, same coil, press down, so it's a new coil. So I will press up. And there we go. And then just uh, just the wattage down and the first time <laughs> the first thing I used on this device was my Russian I had rebuilt it. I just put a quick and dirty um, nickel 200 build in there uh, just to take advantage of the temperature control because that's probably all I'm going to be using it for yeah. but uh, but yeah I plugged it in and I had some Bowdoin's made by uh, by five ponds you know stretched with e-liquid um, uh, stretched with VG I mean uh, and I just put it in there, I built it, I filled it up, and vaped it, and it was honestly, it was a, it's very, very different, because DNA30 and a K-Fun system, I think anybody would agree, is just fantastic. It is, it is the standard when it comes to amazing vapes. So whenever I, I used to run it on this thing, I'd have it at like 12, you know, in between between 10 and 13 watts depending on my resistance usually it's like a between a 1.3 and a and a 1.6 ohm that's just how i've done it um but in this it, you know it's kind of like around 11 and a half watts and in between like 10 watts and 13 watts and in between 420 and 470 ish 480 degrees it's kind of like my sweet spot but it's 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 just a fantastic vape man i mean it is I'm not going to lie, it is the smoothest vape I've ever had because it's very different. It is because the temperature doesn't run away, it just limits it. And whenever you feel it starts hitting a little bit weak because it keeps hitting the temperature production, one way you can kind of work around that is just by increasing the temperature a little bit. <laughs> so right now I added at like 450, I'll just show you guys. I'm cranking it up to 480. I probably clicked the wattage up to you know 12 and a half watts, so now it's at 480. And you guys see the resistance is set to 2.8 ohm. And the resistance kind of changes. It also changes with heat as well. And um, what was I about to say? Um, it's definitely a warm vape. It's a satisfyingly warm vape without being annoyingly hot. But it's, you know, it's nice. It's a nice warm vape. I like it. When I was driving home from school, um, I think it was actually both yesterday and the day before, because I got this thing in on Monday. Um, and by Monday, I mean. Monday the 19th, the 18th, 18th, 17th. Monday the 17th, I think is what it was. Um, November 17th, 2014, because this video would be outdated for those of you who are watching three years from now or six months from now. Um, yeah, and that that day. And I was driving home from school, I was just chain vaping it, chain vaping it, and it was amazing. I mean, occasionally I get a dry hit, but that's not the DNA's fault. It's not the device's fault. It's, you know, putting higher VG juices in a K fun system. You really have to wick it perfectly, and you really have to get the airflow fucking kind of perfect as well. Otherwise, you know, it's just, you're gonna have a dry hit. But other than that, I mean, that's kind of like user, that's on me. That's not on, on the device. It's not the device's fault. Um, but it's whenever I, I don't get that dry hit, it's just fantastic. And those of you guys who want to see it in action, I'll show you. So you can like note the wattage and the temperature. All right, ready? I'm gonna be hitting it right now because because if you just click it, and if I just show you guys, it's not a realistic. 
it's not a realistic comparison. You actually have to see how it is while it's being vaped. So it may look a bit funny, but are you ready? Ready? Let's do it. And whenever it hits temperature protection, it doesn't stop. It doesn't cut off. It just tells you, hey, we've hit the temperature. I'm going to keep firing. You know, it keeps firing. So if I were to click it, and you guys can. Actually, because I don't feel like, you know, <laughs> I don't feel like, uh, like uh, what's it called? This is 100%, not 100%, but it's close to max VG because um, it is close to it. Uh, if I were to just click it and hold it, I don't want to run a risk. That's just me. I really don't feel like fucking reworking it again because I'll get a dry hit, but that's, as I said before, it's not the device's fault. It's, that's on me. So if I'll just put my Nimbus on here, I'll be able to show you guys a lot better. And on the Nimbus, I just have a an 8 wrap of uh, the Nickel 200 around the 3mm drill bit. Comes out to around 0 0.15, 0 0.18, yeah, 0 0.14. It kind of changes a little bit. So I'll just show you guys the production on this one. Well, first, let me just crank up the wattage a little bit because it is a dripper, and I like my warm vapes. When it comes to because when it when it comes to this, uh, there. It's kind of almost like unfair coming from me because I was using 24 gauge parallel four wrap dual coil in my uh, in, in, on my King my mechanical mod and I was running that for like a week or two and then I was just doing 24 gauge um just 24 gauge builds it was like from between 0.15 and 0.2 and it was a hot vape I mean it was a lot a lot of vaping production it was definitely a warm vape. So this thing, I kind of had my expectations and my, my satisfaction level was up here. And if this thing didn't deliver, it would have just, you know, completely disappointed me because that's like 190. No. But uh, <laughs> but uh, let me just have a couple of vapes on this just to show you guys because you guys think, okay, well, that's what it looks like on a four wrap on, on, on a point four with the plume That's you, you see that vapor production, but what does the vapor production look like on a point one? What does it look like on a Russian? So I wanted to show you guys all that. Yeah, 480 is good. And I'll show you guys proof. You guys see it. You see the vapor production. You can definitely get a cloud going on. But yeah, so let me show you guys, you know, how it would look with this. All right, you ready? And in case you guys are probably wondering, yes, I can take some really, really deep inhales. I can, I, I could probably go back when I was cloud chasing, um, just chucking the vapor. Um, I always like to just take a really, really, really deep, you know, you know, just a really deep inhale. So uh, as you guys can tell, I got some lung capacity. I'm not bragging or anything. I'm just saying, just so you guys know. Ugh. The vape and dries your throat a little bit, so you got you got to just drink uh, quite a bit of water. But um, but yeah, I mean, rock rock solid device came out really well, really 
really satisfied with it. Um, show you guys how clicky the buttons are. I'm going to click the fire button for you guys. Now I'm going to click on the left and right buttons for you guys. So nice clicky, nice tactile. Um, when it comes to these two screws right here, I don't have hex screws. Actually, I do. But I don't feel like taking it out and voiding the warranty. I think it's like four month warranty or some shit like that. So in four months, I'll take it apart and I'll see what happens. But a lot of the uh, earlier batches of the DNA 40s, they had like something going wrong with the screen on the little ribbon. You had to put like some silicone shit or whatever. Forgot what it was just to fix it. Um, I haven't had any problems with mine. It's been fantastic. I really, really, really been enjoying it. Same features as any other DNA device, you know, five clicks on off, left mode, right mode, stealth mode, you know, you click when it's unlocked, you click these two buttons and it locks the wattage for you. So you can like click them by accident. Um, if you have the scene locked and you click the two buttons, it goes into temperature mode and you just adjust it like that. You know. But yeah, really, really liking the device. I mean, really really satisfied with it I'm loving it loving it loving every moment of it I'm not gonna lie it's got some heft to it it's got some weight it's definitely um definitely heavy especially for the size I think it's it's heavier than my H cigar and they both take the same fucking size battery 18650 <laughs> and I know after I showed you guys me taking a deep inhale, there's going to be at least one of you guys just thinking, come on, man, show us what a deep inhale would look like. Cloud chase it. So just for you guys, let me just bust off a clean veil. Should I max it out? Should I max it out? That would be, that'd be a little bit intense. So I feel like fucking charring the wick again. Wouldn't that would, that would piss me off. And I'm sure there's a couple of you guys thinking, come on, no one just... Put some 100% VG in there. Come on, just do it and vape it and just sorry. But uh, yeah, I'm just applying my, applying to my settings. New coil is up, same coil goes down, so it's a new coil. We have 480. Let me just do 36 and a half, uh, 36 watts at 480 degrees. You know, you know what? Fuck it. I'll adjust it. Uh, we'll go to 500. I'll show you guys right now. So you guys can't tell me, oh, oh, he didn't show us. How do I know what he's vaping at? I'll show you the proof. Just, just calm down. All right, there we go. 36 watts, uh, 520 degrees, around 0.39 ohms with the plume. Let's do it. Ready? I'll show you guys. I have a white background, and you guys are probably fucking pissed at that, and I'm sorry, so I'll kind of try it again. Ugh. Ugh, it's a little box in here. <laughs> Just a little. Just a little. But yeah, really nice device. I'm trying to think of any last minute things to, to say. Like I said, this is a first impressions video. 34 minutes long already. But uh, I figured I'll tell you guys everything about the device, you know? Because I don't want to just do a first impressions, not show you shit, just tell you, you know, the bare minimum. I want to show you guys, kind of like Phil Basardo, I want to show you guys a lot. I want to make sure you guys get everything you need from a video. So I'll put different atomizers on it, different temperatures. I showed you guys, you know, how it performs at this temperature, that temperature, this coil, with that coil. Uh, there was some guy 
on YouTube. He did a wow. He did like a forty wrap, I think, of like a thirty gauge nickel two hundred, and he was vaping at like .7. I think he was even doing um, one ohm as well on the nickel two hundred with temperature control. I have yet to try that, but I really don't feel like doing fucking forty wraps because it is a bitch and it is a wide coil, and it's really soft and. I've destroyed a coil before, and it's fucking annoying. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll try it out. You know, I'll come out with a review for it, and in time, give me a little bit. Um, this is definitely going to be my all-day vape, so I will be field testing it for you guys. <laughs> and um, uh, for all my subscribers and whoever's watching the video, whoever's seen my previous videos, um, I do have a couple of new things I'm going to show you guys. I will have a review coming out of, um, and I've had this device for a while, uh, Surefire Vapor uh, King, hashtag I am proof model. It is an authentic. Um, yeah, Surefire Vapor, they're, uh, they're a bunch of interesting characters, you know, when their King first came out, it was, uh, you know, it was good, it was its, it was its own design, it was a uh, <coughs> clone of the chief. It was a uh, pretty, pretty nice, you know. I, I kind of wanted one, but uh, I mean, it came with a nice box. I know we're going a little bit off topic here, but yeah, you know, you know, fucking typical fucking box and shit certificate of authenticity, blah blah blah. Mine's zero number two ninety seven. Don't mean shit. There's only five hundred of them made, so it's a limited edition run. And it's really funny how they do that. It's funny how all their new products when they come out, they're all limited edition, you know? <sighs> Amazing. But yeah, I'll, I'll also come out with a review of the H Cigar DNA 30 clone. Um, really nice. Uh, my only gripe with it is the fucking 510, which fucking pissed me off. But uh, I'll get to that in the review. Um, got a few, you know, I'll come out with a, a Plume Veil review as well. Uh, Russian 91% authentic review as well. And a Russian 91, there's a re the reason I bought that over the K-Fund is I really didn't feel like shelling out, uh, you know, fucking 170 for a fucking refillable. Um, unless it was like an Orchid that's really freaking awesome and, you know, amazing quality and, you know, functions really well, then I maybe would consider it, but, but I, I just, I don't have the money for that, man. But if we're on a budget, I'll also give you guys a review of, of the Atomic, the the Atomic by MCV Philippines, Masterpiece Custom Vapes Philippines. Um, uh, this little thing, it's just a fucking Dowlin 510, is what it is. Uh, and to those of you guys who think, you know, oh, he only uses Authentics, he hates clones. No, I've got a fucking Still Air clone that I'll show you guys, you know. Eh, I've been liking it. I don't use it as much because when I bought my Plume Veil, I stopped using all my other rebuildables. <laughs> I was only using the Plume Veil. But um, it's been fantastic, you know, whenever I take this to school, really awesome, pockets really well, I mean, nice, it's a good banger, I really love it. Really nice, really nice. I'm trying to think of anything else. Oh, and um, excuse me, just burped. Um, to all you guys wondering about the cloud chasing, or the... How to sub ohm cloud chasing 101 part three. Uh, the reason I haven't been able to come out with my videos recently is because uh, I don't have a camera, and whenever I'm showing you guys the uppy closey rebuildy portions, um, I don't have a camera and I don't want to, to come out blurry because I don't want some fucking kid crisscrossing his wraps, short circuiting his shit, you know not fixing his hot spots, just getting a really bad vape, and I really don't feel like getting a hundred comments of like, hey man, I did exactly what you did, but it came out bad, blah, blah, blah. I'm just thinking, dude, fuck, you crisscrossed it. No, oh, man, you got a short, you know, some fucker's battery vents on him because he, his battery can't handle the amp limits and shit, but, but anyways, you know, so, but uh, good news though, I got quite a few rebuilding stuff, you know, got my, my precision drivers, uh, wire cutters, I got a shit ton of camp, you know, just 100 feet of 24 gauge. And yes, I know, I know all those hardcore cloud chasers with their elitist attitude. 
Oh man, you can't fucking use twenty four gauge. I fucking use eighteen gauge. I don't you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, fuck you. Um, it. Yeah, I will get lower gauge wires, so I'll show you guys different builds. I'll also show you, and I'm, and to all of you guys wondering, yes, I'm well aware you can build a fucking one ohm micro coil and crank it up to fucking seven volts and just cloud chase on that. Yes, I know you can. All right, I know. I'm not a fucking noob. All right, I know my shit. I'm gonna come off as arrogant, but just fucking stop fucking commenting with, oh, I could do this rap and get these clouds. I'm thinking, dude, I know you can, man. I know you can. I fucking, I'm not a noob with coil building. I've done my own shit. I wrap my own builds, you know? And I'll probably come out with a part four as well. Part one will, or part three. Part three. <laughs> part three. Part three will, um, It'll have a, what's it called? It will have, you know, just different different coil builds, different like contact coils and shit like that. And then when I get to, to part four, I'll show you guys the extreme builds. Because I know you guys are like, oh, well, I can do this, this, that, and that. It's like, well, okay, then good for you. Good for you. In 101 part four, I'm going to do some pretty mean builds. I mean, I'm probably going to have to get like an IGO W because I really don't feel like burning out my fucking insulators on my pin bill and all my other shit. I'm gonna do things like parallel Clapton's, um, that one guy Twisted Messes. I'll probably do some of his builds, his, um, his fused Clapton, or his twice fused Clapton, which is basically two Clapton coils in parallel, like a parallel coil, but with two Clapton coils. And then you Clapton that shit. <laughs> I think that's what it is. I'm gonna do builds like that. Um, triple Twisted, you know, 26 gauge. Just different builds, you know, I'll, I'll put it, I'll try and crank it up to 40 watts. I'll, I'll put it on the mechanical, I mean, we'll do shit, we'll be good. And, and to those of you guys wondering, oh, you have shitty batteries. Oh, no, 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 because back in the other video, that was like fucking damn near a year ago. I've definitely upgraded. I have batteries, all right? I got some good batteries. Back then I was using 20 amperes. I think the best one I had was the VTC4 at the time. But even then, I knew my amp limits. I knew... Ohm's law in relation to amps, so it's not it's not like I was just fucking around not knowing what I was doing. So one of the biggest things I emphasized in part one and part two was battery safety. Because there's gonna be some new oh can I run an 18500 with the fucking with the 0.2 ohm fucking dragon coil? I'm just like seriously. <laughs> well, let me guess you just went to a regular vape shop, they just built you a Fucking a point one, send you on your way. Yeah, have a nice day, you know. Don't even look up batteries and shit. But yeah, so I'll show you guys different things. I'll definitely have some good shit coming up. One of the biggest cons was I didn't have a fucking camera, <laughs> so I couldn't show you guys good shit. And this webcam wouldn't be able to flip it. So whenever I'd like bring a good resistance and I'd show you guys, I'd be like, hey, look, I got this on coil and it's all backwards and shit. And you guys are like, no, wait a minute, that looks like a six. No, that's a seven. No, that's a five. It's a backwards nine, you know? But yeah, oh, this video is getting way too long. And um, that's just what I got. Uh, it's just a bit of a first impressions. And it's not like I wanted to be the first guy on YouTube. I just wanted to come up with a first impression. You know, it's not a review. All right. It, it's going to take me a while to review it. But um, another con, when you get juice on this shit, because it's a matte rubbery finish, and if you get juice on it, it will fucking, not stain it, but it's going to be a bitch to just wipe off. And if I do this, look at that. Look at that. And if I wipe it, you still see it? Did you still see it? No, you probably still can't see it because my camera fucking sucks. If, if I had a 4K camera, you could tell. But yeah, it's not like it'll get scratched or anything. I mean, it, it'll eventually go away, which is pretty legit. But, um, yeah, um, you know, fucking micro USB right there. You can use it as a pass-through where you just um, take out the battery, plug it into micro USB, and just vape it like that. You could absolutely do it. Um, you know, fuck, let me just do it. Let me just do it right now for science. For the sake of freaking science. If I could find the USB cord it came with, which it came with, you know. Nice, you know, pretty legit little USB. So, you do, do that. Mm. And you plug it in, and fucking plug it in. I can't get it in. I can't get it in. That's what he said. 
when you plug it in, you know, it's like that. Pretty good. Or, and yes, you can bake it while you're using it. Let me just demonstrate. So, there you go. Red light. And when it's done charging, it goes to green as well. This thing needs some juice. Different juices I'm running is Kiwi by Voodoo, Twisted Kiwi by Voodoo, Queenside by Five Ponds, and um, Phoenix Flood by Trolley Vapors. And no, Twisted Kiwi is by Evo Kiwi. Um, all of them are stretch BG because I don't have the fucking money to afford that shit because it's fucking expensive. Okay. All right, all right. So, pop the back panel off. Pull out the battery. But look. It's still charging. You can still use it. Look at that. No battery. No battery. What? Bullshit. Oh, it tells you it's check atomizer. That's gay. I was able to do it earlier. What? That's fucking gay. That is fucking stupid, bro. Okay, how about you don't do it because it was starting to buzz when I heard it. So, yeah, you cannot use it as a pass-through. Um, because the word pass-through is used loosely. Pass-through means no battery. You have, it's like a lamp. It doesn't have its own internal battery. You plug it into the wall and that gives it its color. It's basically like that, you know. Um, a lamp with a, with a cord, with a wire. Um, that is pass-through. Um, but whenever everyone else says, oh, it's, you know, pass-through. You can charge it and vape it at the same time. Well, that... While your, while your battery is charging inside your device as well, or some shit like that. And in, you know, it's kind of true, but it's kind of not, because that doesn't fit the freaking definition of pass-through. But yeah, you can pass through it. Damn. Fucking damn. Almost feels dry. That almost freaking feels dry. I mean, I'm, I definitely, I definitely have some dry wicks. I don't know, maybe you guys look sweat, but to me, trust me, from here a little. Oh no, it's actually it's a little wet. It's weird. actually tasting something dry here. It almost tastes dry. It almost tastes burnt, you know? It could also be the fucking ridiculous of how the wattage is there. Because I normally don't run at fucking 36 watts. Normally I go to fucking 32-ish. I mean, it'll let you know when it's dry, but it's not annoying. I mean, you know, burnt hit of death, dry hit of death. It's not like that. It's definitely a little unpleasant. But the beauty about that is if you ever have to fucking stealth vape it, you could just pour a little bit of juice on your thing. And um, pour a little bit of juice. And because it's not going to let the temperature run away, you can just get some little baby clouds and just stealth it. <laughs> 32 watts, 420 degrees Fahrenheit. Let me show you guys. Probably looks like a good a big cloud you got, or, or whatever cloud, but it's, it's actually a little bit of a, compared to earlier, In. Is everybody complaining I'm talking too much? Not an experienced reviewer, damn it. You know? I'm kind of new. Kind of 
new. I'm, you know, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Be patient. You know, later reviews would. I'm not a professional reviewer, and I just, just if a product's nice, I'll give you guys my thoughts on it. That's just what it is. You know, I figure I'll give you guys a first impressions on it because nobody, nobody else really gives good first impression. Oh no, I'm not gonna say that. Um, I just I feel like I can give you guys some good information. Okay, that's what it is. If you don't like it, fuck off, unsubscribe, don't watch the fucking video, all right? If you do like it, then awesome. You get some good information. I hope you found what you were, what you were looking for. Um, I'm going to keep using this thing, obviously. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. I'm sorry this was a long-ass video, but I fucking damn near covered everything about it. I should just title this video as a fucking review. I won't. But yeah, I'll do different builds on it. I'll also do um, twisted 32 gauge nickel 200 builds as well. I'll put it through its paces. I'll put quad coils in it. I'll show you guys. I'll give you guys the lowdown. I'll, I'll definitely tell you guys everything. I don't even know. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.